Have you ever wanted a bunch of free stuff from a pre-war military in a post-apocalyptic world? Well, today we're going to be going over how to get that stuff in the Operation Anchorage DLC and the glitch that goes along with it. This is a fairly well-known glitch, but there's actually several and various ways that you can pull this off. So today we're going to be going over a complete guide on how to do this. So a couple of things that are going to be very useful to you for actually getting through this and getting through the glitch. One is sneak. Sneak is actually really, really useful. So having high sneak is going to make this much easier in the long run. Otherwise, you can still do it with lower sneak, but it's going to be much more difficult than if you have very high sneak. So I would recommend that before you go to Anchorage, probably tag the sneak skill and potentially pump some levels into sneak. I'd probably say somewhere around 70, unless of course you've gotten to somewhat higher levels and maybe you have silent running as well. You may also want some speech, but the speech checks can just be safe scummed, which is not really that big of a deal. So having high speech or at least decent speech is going to make it so that about the middle part of this portion is going to be a little bit easier for you than it otherwise would be. It's not super difficult, and if you don't care about an unbreakable Gauss rifle, then you don't need it. But if you do want the Gauss rifle and you do want an unbreakable, you're going to need to pass a speech check. And then the last thing that you're going to need is Operation Anchorage. So make sure that you actually have that DLC and make sure that it's installed. Otherwise, this is going to be all for naught. So part one of this guide is going to be starting Operation Anchorage. This is going to be the easiest part of it because all you have to do is start Operation Anchorage and go through the first section. Nothing really changes here. Just complete the very first section of helping the outcasts and getting to their bunker. That's all you got to do for this section. Part two is the Gary glitch slash the every body glitch. So this is a very important step and you should probably save before going into the actual simulation because of this part. What you're going to need to do is there is a locked door. I believe this has an average lock so you're going to need 50 lock picking to get through it. You may also want to invest a little bit in lock picking. I should have mentioned that at the start of this too. You could also potentially cheat this out with various cams and with potentially the uh, vault suit or at least the uh, utility suit for it. If you don't have this yet, and you don't want to do the every body glitch, which you just kill everybody in this bunker, then you may want to hold off from going into the simulation until you can actually get through this door. If you do this, then you can get like technically the best ending for Operation Anchorage 2, although there's not really that much difference between the best and the worst ending. Inside of this room, you're going to find a dead Gary, and what you're going to want to do with this Gary is once the pod is open, grab Gary. You can do this by hitting Z on the keyboard or pushing in the right thumbstick on on controller grab this body and then move it into the pod you want to put it right on the chair as much as possible the general idea of this is once you're in the chair you can be looking directly at Gary's corpse so that you can interact with it once you're getting out of the simulation this is much more difficult if you just have Gary in here because you, there's a lot more room of uh, potential failure here if you do the every body glitch which is just kill everybody in this bunker right away this is far far simpler and it's a lot more reliable I would recommend you do that, especially if this is your first time trying out this glitch. So in that case, just kill everybody inside the bunker and move all of their bodies into the pod. Unfortunately, sometimes their bodies get stuck in the floor. That happened to me to where two of them just couldn't move. I couldn't actually pick them up and carry them. So I had to make do with the bodies that I did have. You want to put as many of these on the chair as possible. You want to have them as much stacked up there as, as possible. But the more bodies you have in there, the better. Because once the actual shell closes, those bodies will actually be pushed towards you. Make sure that you got everybody's body in there. If you are really serious about this and you get the same glitch that I did where you can't pick the bodies up off the ground, then simply reload and try again until you do this. You can actually achieve this outcome pretty early on because there's a combat shotgun inside the vault. Once you have everybody dead and everybody in the pod, do a hard save here and then you can climb inside of the pod. For part three of this, all you have to do is complete the very first part of the simulation of Operation Anchorage. You should get the silent 10 millimeter and the trench knife at the very start of this. And then you can also pick up something like a Chinese assault rifle throughout it. And if you really want the perk in Operation Anchorage, then be sure to look out for the briefcases, which there's two in the starting area that you go through and then two in the uh, ladder half of this area your main goal here is just to get through all the Chinese soldiers and then get to the guns to where you can blow them up the footage if you're wondering in the background I was just speed running through this with God mode on just so that I could show this glitch off a little bit quicker part four the armor slash ammo glitch now in order to do this after you've blown up the guns simply talk to the colonel go through all the dialogue get a if you're in my case you get a weird bug where it won't stop punching and you have to like exit out of the game and TCL out it's really weird I don't know why this happened to me it's never happened before but uh, it's just another strange range bug that can happen in Fallout. Uh, once you talk to this and you've got your squad all set up, pick your loadout from the terminal, then go over and talk to the quartermaster. You request your loadout and you'll get that stuff. This is pretty important because this is how you're going to get um, all the unbreakable weapons out of Anchorage, assuming that you want them. You could just pick one set and just keep that if you would like, but you can get all of them. 
In order to do this, just go back to the tent that you're already in where you requisitioned your loadout, pick a different one, go outside next to the quartermaster, drop all of the gear that you currently have, then talk to him. He will then just give you the, the weapons and that will stay on the ground. You can then drop the weapons and repeat this with all four of the loadouts or as many times as you would like if you're going for lots of explosives or something like that. The way to get infinite ammo too is go into the back of his tent where there's an ammo dispenser, drop all of your ammo that you would like to get more of and then interact with that. And you can repeat this step multiple times, then you just pick up all of your ammo off the ground. This is the way that you can get potentially infinite amounts of ammo for all of the weapons that are in the simulation. So this is 556, 12 gauge, 308, 10 millimeter. Um, this doesn't work with the microfusion cells or with the missiles, but it does work with all of the other uh, standard weapons. Once you've gotten all of them, then make sure that you do a hard save. Part five of this glitch is getting the Gauss rifle and killing off the quartermaster. So make sure that you talk to the quartermaster and pass the speech check. You're gonna wanna do a hard save before this as well. This way, if you screw up the speech check, you can just reload it. You do just wanna keep doing this until you get a success. That way you get the Gauss rifle. After this, you're going to wanna hide inside of his tent somewhere. It doesn't really matter where, just so long as he can't see you and nobody else can see you. Then execute the quartermaster. This is going to be easiest done with something like the combat shotgun, that way you guarantee the kill from it. Once you kill him, then nobody else should be angry at you. If they are, reload a save. That way you can just keep trying this because otherwise this is going to be a lot more of a pain to get through. Once you've successfully done this, you can actually search the quartermaster's body. He is the only person in the simulation where you can actually search his body. So take his combat armor off of him. This is going to be important in order to get General Jigwee's suit of clothing that's actually really, really strong. And then do another hard save here. That way you have everything. After this, complete your second and third task. This is going to the listening post and going to the Chimera tank depot blow up the depot and destroy the listening post. This should be pretty simple for you. Once you get through that, then you're on to the last part of Operation Anchorage. As a little side note for this glitch that really helps out is don't take Sergeant Benji for the very last part of the, the mission because otherwise he's going to make everything way more difficult for you and he's going to make it basically impossible for you to loot the stuff off of General Jigwe. There is some ways that you can do it, especially if you're cheating, but otherwise you're just going to have to hope that he gets stuck on something and you can still interact with him. Just make sure that you don't talk to Benji and he won't follow you to this next part. After this, complete the final part of Operation Anchorage. So all you have to do is just run through, kill all the Chinese in the area. You can pick up the remaining briefcases if you want the covert ops perk and then actually get to the minefield. Once the minefield is switched off and you head towards the building, I would recommend another hard save here because otherwise things can get a little bit weird. Once you're in the final area with General Jigwe, this is where the last part of our glitch has come into where you can actually steal his clothing. So in order to do this, you can actually do this one of two ways. One way is a lot easier I've found than the other, but let's go over the harder way first that can work, but it, it is very iffy. Uh, the first way is actually run back here to these crates. If you do this, you can actually jump up on the barrels and then climb up behind the area. You want General Jigway to get stuck somewhere around the crates very close to you, and you have to get to the hiding status. So having higher sneak here is going to be much easier uh, to complete this than if you have low sneak. If you can get him stuck around the crates, go into third person and then spin your camera around and try to pickpocket him from here. This is going to be difficult because he does need to be somewhere close to the area, but if you can do this, then you can reverse pickpocket him and you can put the quartermaster's combat armor into his inventory. That's the main thing that we're going to try to do here. I couldn't really get this to work on my run here, so the easier way that I found is run back to the door that you came in, also go into third person and spin your camera around. You should be able to interact with the door leading out of here. Once you leave out of here, then only General Jigway should follow you. If you do achieve this, run south to the bunker that's nearby. That's the easiest place that I found, although you can do it around the, the entrance building too. It's not nearly as consistent. You're probably going to have to do the third person through the wall again, but just go around this bunker and try to hide from General Jigway. Again, higher sneak is going to make this far easier. Once you're hidden and there's no enemies around for him to actually attack, or I guess allies for him to attack, then he should start walking back to the area. This will give you a chance to sneak up behind him and then reverse pickpocket him, giving him the combat armor. Before you do this, I would recommend another hard save here because sometimes he can be kind of difficult to actually put the armor on. He can actually catch you really easily, as well as he does have a high chance of catching you uh, if you're not directly behind him and you don't have high sneak. So hard saves around here are going to make this a lot easier for you. Once you have put the combat armor into his inventory, then run back through the main gate where you first met him. Uh, he should show up here and he should be wearing the winterized combat armor then over his general's outfit. This is a good sign and this means that you have completed the glitch so far. Now run back to that door and repeat the previous step. 
where you want to be going somewhere down to the bunker and hiding from him. Once you've successfully hid, once again save, and then go up and pickpocket him, and you should be able to take the General's outfit. Now, weirdly enough, the General's outfit can actually still be kept with you, even if you don't do the Gary glitch. I've had this happen too. It seems random whether or not this actually works, but so long as you have it in your inventory, there is a chance that leaving Operation Anchorage, even if you messed up the Gary glitch or the Everybody glitch, then you still probably are going to keep the general's outfit. You can only get his outfit, you can't get his helmet even when you put the combat armor helmet on him. He still won't take that off over his regular hat. But the regular outfit protects for 20 and only weighs 2, so it has the best defense to weight ratio in the game. After you've done this step, go back to the main area and kill General Jigway. This should be pretty simple for you, use whatever you'd like. He will be tankier because that combat armor actually protects him a little bit more than what his general outfit does, so that's kind of funny. Once he's dead, then be sure to do another hard save here because this is the last save that you're probably going to need. Upon leaving the simulation, use whatever your interact button is. If you're on mouse and keyboard, then this is E by default. If you're playing on controller, then this is going to either be A or X. As soon as you leave Operation Anchorage, there is a few seconds where you can actually interact with one of the bodies around there, or multiple bodies depending on how you stack them into the pod. Interact with them, and then if you see all of your Operation Anchorage stuff that you had previously, then you've done the glitch correctly. Put all of that gear into that body and then leave that body. Once you do, you'll be climbing out of the simulation pod. Check your inventory and you should have all of your gear that you had before going into the simulation and then search the body that you put all of that loot on. You should then be able to collect all of it. Once you do that, you will have all the bullets and unbreakable weapons that you got in Anchorage. I guess technically the weapons aren't unbreakable, but they got like 9 million health, so they're practically unbreakable. This is a way to get an unbreakable Gauss rifle, the Chinese general outfit, an unbreakable submachine gun, pistol, shotgun, missile launcher. Uh, I, the grenades are breakable. Even though you can take them out of here, they will look a bit better in the textures. But yeah, you're not going to be able to pick up your explosives after you've already used them, sadly. Those ones do actually break after the use. And that's how to complete the Operation Anchorage glitch. You can get a lot of gear from this. You can do this glitch really early on and it makes it so the rest of the game is incredibly easy. Although if you just run through Operation Anchorage normally, you can still then get the power armor at the end of this and get the General's Shock Sword too, which also makes the early game pretty easy. Hope this helped you out. Enjoy your newfound overpoweredness in the wasteland.